Yeah, you know, as always, uh, appreciate uh, such a big group joining us today, man. Appreciate you guys always coming out and, and following us, especially through the course of the season. Um, obviously, it's been a really busy December. Um, team awards banquet, transfer portal, meeting with players, official visits, uh, big signing day tomorrow, a lot of things moving, a lot of moving parts. And so uh, as, a, as a program, we've been uh, been fairly busy, but I'm excited to get back into game prep, which we started yesterday. Uh, the previous two weeks, we had a bunch of modified practices where we kind of used those practices as spring football. As you guys know, I always talk about the last game of the year, which for us this year was Rutgers being the end of the 23 season. And we transitioned to the 24 season with our bowl game. And, and, and you can see why we, we, we took on this philosophy, because the team that played uh, in, in the Rutgers game isn't necessarily the team that will play in a bowl game. And I think what you'll see in, over the course of the last couple of bowl games we went to, you saw a lot of freshmen and players that maybe didn't have an impact on this season kind of have coming out parties. I can think back to the pinstripe bowl where Roman Hemby and Antoine Littleton uh, showed up on the scene for us. And I expect that uh, to be the norm now, especially with the landscape of college football and where we're going. And I know when you transition from the end of the season to the bowl game, uh, the energy that these players that haven't maybe played a lot of uh, snaps or an impact on the games, uh, you see you see quite a bit of fight and you see a, quite a bit of energy out of the group. And so um, I think that as we get into game prep here the next couple of weeks, you'll see uh, a bunch of the veteran guys that are finishing up their careers, but you'll also see the uh, implementation of some of the younger players that we've seen over the course of this season that maybe didn't have as big an impact on our season. But you, you'll see a precursor to what hopefully um, our future looks like. Um, I want to once again thank Scott Ramsey there with the uh, and everybody affiliated with the TransPerfect uh, Music City Bowl. Um, we're really looking forward to getting down to Nashville on the 26th. Uh, we'll practice this uh, off tomorrow, practice Thursday, Friday, and have a Saturday morning practice. We're into our normal week practice, meaning today is a Tuesday practice for us, which is a big work day. Um, but we're excited to be able to go down to Nashville and play in our third straight bowl game. Um, address the elephant in the room. Um, Talia Tungavailoa has opted out of the game. Um, you know, he won't be playing. We certainly thank him and his family for all he's given this program over the last four years. But like all position, it's next man up. And, uh, and this provides Billy Edwards, uh, Cam Edge, Champ Long, Jaden Saray, some of the quarterbacks in our program, an opportunity here uh, as we head into the bowl game. And I'm excited for to see what Billy's able to do. Um, you know, you kind of look at this game almost like a uh, preseason game leading into next year. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to evaluate our quarterback situation um, going into the next year. Um, but we got a lot of faith in Billy. We got a lot of faith in Cam that both those guys um, have the ability, the skill set to operate our system. You know, with Auburn, obviously, like us, uh, there's a lot of a lot of moving parts. And so to get up and talk personnel, I, I have no idea. I, I've followed and tracked it a little bit to know that they do have some players that are opting out. I do know that there will be a well-coached team. Um, I actually had a chance to talk to Coach Freeze uh, on the phone a couple of weeks ago as we have agreed to utilize technology in our bowl game uh, with the player to coach thing that they use in the NFL communication as well as the tablets on the sideline. This is uh, we have a waiver to be able to do that. And we both have agreed to utilize some of this stuff as I think we'll transition uh, maybe next season into it. So it gives us an opportunity. We used it for the first time yesterday uh, in practice. And, and I think it's a good thing. But you know, this was year one for him at Auburn. And to just think, you know, they're about a fourth and 21 away from beating a playoff team in Alabama. Um, uh, they'll be, it'll be a big challenge for us. It's a great challenge, a great opportunity. Uh, you know, the two premier leagues, conferences in the country uh, have an opportunity to play uh, down in SEC territory in Nashville, which is a great football city. I know our players, and, and, and we are all really excited uh, about this opportunity. Obviously, our game captains for this week, uh, we had our banquet and our permanent team captains. Uh, so our, they'll serve as our game captains for this. Uh, Ruben Hippolyte, Bo Braid, and Jay Sean Jones uh, were our permanent captains voted in, along with Talia Tungavailoa, who's, who's opted out. Um, but really excited about um, being able to go down and, and put our best foot forward as we uh, transition to our 24 uh, Maryland football family. So with that, I'll open it up to questions.
morning, Mike. Dave, what's up? Not much. Uh, happy holidays. Same to you. Third straight bowl for you guys. What and what has worked well for you guys the last two years uh, as far as from a preparation standpoint that's really gotten things on the right? You know, I think the biggest thing, and I kind of talked about it in my opening statements, is how we transition. You know, a lot of people see the bowl game as the end of the year for us, but you know, when we take our, I call it our family picture at the end of the last game there on the field, I know that players have to make decisions and sometimes coaches make decisions in terms of staying going. And so, you know, we use the bowl game as a precursor for the upcoming season. And to me, that's where, you know, when you transition and it's, you know, kind of out with the old and in with the new, there's an influx of energy that comes about with some of these players that haven't necessarily had the type of impact uh, during the course of the year. But uh, our practices have been very spirited. Uh, these young guys are excited about these opportunities they have, and we've recruited well, and we've developed our team well. So I think it's a great opportunity uh, for us and our program to kind of get a glimpse into what the next season will look like. Billy Edwards, Jr., you've seen a lot more of him than we have this season, obviously. What gives you cause for confidence that he'll be able to answer the challenge? You know, you just think back to two years ago, all right? Billy came in. We were down against Indiana when Leah went out with injury. And all he did was bring us back, um, help us win a very important game on the road against Indiana a couple years ago. And then uh, to get us bowl eligible against Northwestern as a starter his first year in our program. Um, you know, we see him every day in practice. Usually he takes about 40% of the reps as the backup um, with the starter, Lee at the time taking 60%. So he's got a lot of banked reps, a lot of banked experience that has shown us that he's capable of operating our stuff. And, you know, he still has a bunch of the weapons available to him on the outside with Prather and Ty Felton and Jay Sean Jones, the run game, and uh, the O-line is pretty much intact. So we, uh, he has enough weapons, I think, that will allow him to operate our stuff. Finally, the opportunity to use this additional technology. How excited you are? How anxious are you? you know, it's I'm a little nervous, man. You know, I'm a, a dinosaur when it comes to email and iPhones and all that stuff. I guess I'm in the boomer category with it. Um, tried to use it a little bit yesterday, and you get it too close to your mouth. It's kind of like the Nextel. You know, I'm old enough to remember what the Nextel phone used to be like, the chirp chirps, where you don't want it so close to your mouth that they can't hear you. So. It's taken some, some getting used to, but I do think, obviously, with us and how we operate, uh, we, we've been a signal team, and we know through what's happened this year in college football that signals sometimes uh, can, can give advantages. And so for us, it's important to see how this works, because if we're moving toward it, I want to make sure we've had an opportunity to practice it, to use it, and have a feel so I can make an educated decision when it comes time to when my opinion is asked of what I think about using technology in games. But I think it helps the game. It'll speed it up for us, I think, and I think it's good. Hey, Mike, with the, the styles of, of Billy and, and Leah being a little bit different, how does the game planning change, play calling, that kind of thing uh, modify, if at all, going Oh, it does. Going. I mean, you do what your quarterback allows you to do. We kind of know who Billy is. Uh, I think sometimes uh, because of how we use Billy that maybe you guys – think that, oh, Billy's just a runner, but Billy throws the ball really, really well. He's a tr traditional uh, pocket quarterback, but he also has some sneaky athleticism um, that I think catches people off guard. So I've got all the confidence in the world in Billy, um, but I also don't want to leave Cam Edge out of there. Cam's been practicing as the third. Uh, I think you'll see both of them in the game as an opportunity for us to, like I said, evaluate our quarterback situation um, heading into next season. And if you're able to kind of give us an idea of the conversation with Leah and what it was like about opting out and what went into that decision for him and what the conversation was like at all. Yeah, I, I hate getting into the personal conversations. I mean, he handled it the right way. Uh, you know, for some reason, I think uh, when our fans and sometimes our, our supporters have this misconception that we're the only person that has to deal with players not playing, going in the portal, losing top players. I mean, get used to it, people. It's college. It's the landscape of college football. If you have attachment issues, you better get over it quick. And I used to be one of those guys that had attachment issues. I, I hate it, like leaving. I hate people leaving me. But this is the world we live in. This generation, she laughed when I call myself a boomer. So this generation is so used to swiping left and starting over and going to the next page that, you know what? Uh, maybe Coach Locks needs to not be as relationship-based and just become more transactional, which that's the landscape of it. So. Uh, it was, he handled it the right way. Great family, great people. Um, 
he's got some decisions to make, and I'm excited for him. But this is, you look across the country, man, it's happening to everybody. So Maryland fans, understand, this happens to everyone, not just Coach Locks. <laughs> so we're good. We'll be fine. First of all, Mike, that was a solid ref or a boomer. Talk about swipe and left. Like, that's, don't give yourself a little credit. Give yourself a little, give yourself a little, although I don't even know which one is Is it correct. right or left, though? I don't know. I'm, I'm 40 left. with two kids. I don't know. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> thank you. So, I mean, you talked about, you know, not getting into the specifics of the conversation, but this is a player, a family that you've had a relationship with for so many years. I mean, I guess, you know, when you did talk to him and his family, um, just, you know, maybe what was just going through your mind as far as, or just thinking back to his tenure, you know, when you first recruited him and kind of were all those going through your mind or if they're going through your mind now, just, you know, your relationship and what that's been like. And, yeah, and I told you, I, I have to remove the attachment, man, because I, I love hard. I got a big heart for the guys and that I have a chance to coach and recruit. And they're not easy conversation. I'm sure it wasn't easy for him to say, coach, I'm not going to play in the game. Um, and he still has, like I said, other decisions to kind of make. And I'm sure Varun will find a way to ask that question. And I'll find a way to avoid answering it because that's a question for him and his family. But uh, I've gotten, I mean, I, I got to get over it, the attachment piece of it. I love him to death. Great kid, did tremendous amount for our program. Um, like I said, the relationship goes back to, you know, 2016 when I was at Alabama. And we started recruiting uh, Tua and the family migrated to Alabama. So. I have nothing but utmost respect and, and very thankful for uh, what they've been able to do as a family for my career, um, to be honest with you, and, you know, very supportive of whatever his future looks like. Mike, can you talk a little bit about his impact on the program nationally? Because quarterbacks move now in the portal, et cetera. What kind of an impact has he had on this program and the ability or the knowledge for quarterbacks to want to come here and be successful? Well, I think if you look at the quarterbacks that have played in this system, from Tua to Jalen to Mac to, to Elia uh, to C.J. Brown and some of these other guys that have had great success in it, that the system is foolproof and proven that it's a quarterback-driven system, a quarterback-friendly system. And you know, I think he took—he was perfect, perfectly made for this system for us: quick release, accuracy, uh, competitive drive. Um, now, I know for maybe some people around here, I don't think you'll understand the impact of what Leah coming to Maryland uh, will have probably for about 10, 15 years. And then, you know, people are understand that, man, because I've been around here a long time where we've struggled at quarterback. And, you know, we had a guy that played for four years here and had great success. And, you know, some people still, he leaves here a little bit kind of an mm -hmm. enigma. People love him or hate him, and I, I sure love the kid because of what he's been able to do to elevate Maryland football. Didn't do it by himself, and I know he gets a lot of credit and I, and because of the relationship, but kid, pretty special kid. Hey, Coach, um, outside of Talia, are there any other notable opt-outs for this game? If I wasn't a boomer, I'd be able to just buzz them off, but I'm sure you're all over it. So you're over the room, just check your phones. Uh, I can't keep up with them, whether it's the portal, the opt-outs. I, I really couldn't sit up and tell you, but uh, I know we have quite a bit of our starters. I'd say at least 80% of our starters practicing, doing all the things necessary to prepare for the bowl game. Who are some of those starters that aren't practicing? Again, I, I, I could name them. Who, Jay Sean Barham. Who else? Do you know? Outside of the ones who have transferred. Oh, Tarheeb Steele. Um, I think he put out a graphic or something. I, I, I don't keep up with names. You, you could do the research on it. Um, and you talked about this game being a preview for 2024. Mm -hmm. um, with you know, Billy Edwards, Cam Edge also bringing in MJ Morris, do you view that quarterback room as kind of an open competition going into the spring? And then just what do you like about all three of those oh, it's guys? It's definitely open competition. We uh, look, be really clear nobody is promised a starting position that plays for me. I mean, everybody has to earn what they get around here. I talk about that a lot. Um, so, yeah, nobody's been promised the starting position. It's going to be a competitive position. The competition probably will go all the way in through the summer, um, you know, with, you know, once people are here on campus and, you know, we signed a, or we will be signing a, a high school guy as well. But, yeah, it'll be open competition that I expect to, you know, see a bunch of guys competing for uh, – because we've got some talented people around them coming back. So, um, it's, a, it's a position that uh, – the guy that does the best job of taking care of the football and driving it and scoring it will be the guy that leads us out there uh, the first game of next year. 
with the understanding that it's an open competition, with the new kid Morris coming in, though, is this a game that you think, first of all, we are legally, could you have him at the game? Yeah, being on the sidelines, is there an advantage I to him speaking, being there? Speaking in general, there will be guys that, um, guys from the portal that have signed their uh, scholarship tender, Big Ten tender, that will be able to practice with us uh, here in the next, for the next two weeks, even down at the bowl game. They won't be able to participate in the game. Right. But as I said, it gives us a nice precursor to what it looks like. And so we'll have quite a few guys that will be practicing and participating in these bowl ramp up practices. They'll travel to the game, just will not be eligible to play in the game. And if you could just talk a little bit about this era, the way the bowls are where players can opt out, is it a tougher job or an easier job to motivate the players to be psyched to be in a bowl game? No, our players are pumped up about it because, again, you know, uh, Coach Locks kind of finds a way to transition because now, again, the older guys who are winding down, that's where the energy level, worried about getting injured because of NFL opportunities. Well, these young guys, man, we got some young corners and receivers and O-linemen and D-linemen that have not played. And, as again, you look over the last couple of years, guys like Octavian Smith and Roman Hemby and, you know, you saw a bunch of guys that are young, were young players that played in our bowl game. And what I had no problem motivating guys that haven't played a lot. They're motivated to get out, show what they're capable of. We've had great uh, modified practices. You know, we're, we're now into game plan mode, so we're getting a good idea as a staff kind of what the future looks like, what guys uh, uh, can do certain things. And, uh, you know, motivating them isn't an issue. We're, we're preparing to go to win a game. We're not – just looking at it as a, you know, we want to figure some things out, but ultimately mm -hmm. we're going down there to try to win the game. Um, Mike, you mentioned how hectic things are this time of year. Where do you sort of stand on signing day in December? Would you like to see it at a less congested No, I like, to, I like the early signing period. It saves me a lot of time and money. You know, I've said this before, when you're at a place like Maryland, the early signing window is great because I don't have to sweat it out till February about people coming in and poaching and trying to flip guys. It gets them locked in, um, you know. But at other places I worked, I kind of didn't like it early because I'd like to go in and if I don't get a certain guy, go flip a guy from somewhere else. So um, mm -hmm. depends on where you're at, and I, I kind of like where we are with this signing window. We're still probably one of the only schools that focuses in on high school recruiting. I know you see us in the portal for needs, but you know we've, we're going, we plan on signing a bunch of high school kids here tomorrow that will be the core of our future of our program, and I'm excited about that. Uh-oh. This one's not even that. Do you expect both Billy and Cam to play in the bowl game? I did say that earlier. What do you want to see from them? Protect the football and score points. And then um, with the uh, communication, with the Sorry audio communication, mm -hmm. is it going to be like how is in the NFL where the quarterback gets the signals for offense and then a player on defense gets well, it? Uh, we're, we're planning on using two on offense and okay. two on defense. Um, and then obviously the coordinators have the uh, communication and I have the ability to listen as well as chirp in. Um, so no, the plan is to have two on offense, two on defense, and I think we may even use one for our personal protector on the punt team to maybe kind of help a little bit. It's a little different than the NFL because I know in the NFL you got about 15 seconds for it before it shuts down. I don't know if ours shuts down. I'm still working through that. Do you so know who it, the – continue. So if it doesn't, you know, we're, we're trying to figure that out right now. But in practice, we're learning that less is more. Like you, you get this thing and you can say, hey, Billy, look at the boundary safety. He looks like he's off the hash. Go to the left and throw it to – you can do all that. But sometimes that's too much. And so that's why we want to practice with it, get a good feel for how much we could use to just the communication piece of getting plays. And we like to play fast. So this kind of helps us a little bit. And then do you know who the players are that are going to have the communication? Yet? I don't right now. But both quarterbacks, I would assume. Um, on defense, probably a guy in the secondary, maybe this middle field safety, and maybe the Mike linebacker. Um, haven't decided just yet. We're still trying to figure that out. And then on MJ Morris, what did you like about him? What 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 about his skill set appeals? I'm not allowed to comment on him particularly in terms of a skill set, but 
Um, I think I do have a decent track record that if I go get a quarterback, they're usually capable of helping us. And I think whatever quarterbacks we sign will have the ability to, to come in and operate our stuff. That was easy, man. Was, you gave me some good ones. Hey, Coach. Uh, Brandon, talking, what's up? What's up? How are you? Good. Talking about the secondary a little bit, what, what are you planning on? How, how is the usage going to be for some of the younger guys? Because you got a lot of transfers going out, Tarheeb going to the draft. What is the usage anticipating? A lot of transfers. Who we got going out? You got uh, Cooley. You got Avante. How so much just, did he play? I don't know off the top okay. of my head. Right. Just, I know he transferred. Uh, I got you. So, and so just kind of curious, is there anything, anyone in particular you're looking to really perform or anything like that? I mean, it's all of them. I mean, I've been excited. The young corners, we signed, I think, three corners, Kivis and Uzi and uh, Mike Hill Mormon. These are all three dudes that can run. We were running uh, Chance Harley this past season, and he's got great length and size. Those guys have uh, – Kivas played some. Obviously, Lionel's back. He's played a bunch for us. Uh, Jaquan Shepard's playing in the game. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't see this as Perry Fisher, who's been kind of a nickel in the corner. We've got a lot of experienced guys. That's why when you said a bunch of guys going in the portal that were playing. But, like, uh, Heeb is about the one guy that kind of leaving that – has a lot of game experience, and then obviously Corey Coley um, leaving as well. But mm -hmm. we've uh, we've recruited well, and you know those three young corners, as well as Chance Harley and Lionel, I think give us a tremendous chance going into the game. They all can run. They all got length. You know, this will be a great opportunity for us to see just what they are capable of doing. And that's how we want to utilize this game. Okay, um, I just had. I know you talked about. The bowl game could be like candidate for somebody to like break out. Do you have any I I don't obviously know, but do you know if somebody you're like hoping to do that or a few people you were hoping that or I don't know, excited about? Yeah, the young corners, Judy, I, I like our young corners. Um, I had a chance to watch them because I'm on the offensive field and I see them competing and, you know, Kivis and uh, Kivis was one of the young guys that had a chance to kind of he was up with us a lot traveled a lot maybe didn't play as much um but i'm excited to see him he has a tremendous skill set can run good speed i think both the young guys that were on scout teams this year uzi and uh and michael both um excited you know chance harley is a guy that's played in some games for us and and, and again transferred in from villanova i'd say the secondary the corners um some of these young receivers like i think it's time for uh you know, punch Shalik uh, Knotts to kind of have that breakout. I mean, I've been waiting for this, and, you know, he'll have an opportunity, I think, in this game, uh, even though we've got Ty and Jay Sean and, and, and uh, Kaden all playing. You know, he's another one of those guys that I think has the potential to be a star around here. Um, I love both the young tight ends and Preston and as well as uh, Dylan, Dylan Wade, and both those guys contributed quite a bit here. Um, so, yeah, uh, just quite a bit on the defensive side. Daniel Wingate, uh, Michael Harris, these two young linebackers who they played quite a bit all season long. Jordan Phillips all season long. So, uh, a bunch of guys. Gave you enough names for your article? All right. Perfect. That's all right. Last two I have in a minute. Coach, uh, circling back on the uh, transactional nature of, of, of some of the stuff nowadays in college football, uh, what is your philosophy on guys that have announced their intentions to enter the portal in terms of letting them play in the bowl game? Uh, if you go on a portal based on your decision, so there's two type of portal windows, all right? One are guys that have COVID years that, you know, some schools have decided to not recruit high school guys, so they bring back their, their – uh, returning players that have a COVID year. Well, some of those guys I've met with and I told them that I plan on signing a high school gig, uh, player. And so they go on the portal and then you guys write about it. And then our fans say the sky is falling and that everybody's leaving, but they don't know the background on some guys are leaving because it's a COVID year. They've got their degrees from Maryland and that, you know, we've, we want to recruit some high school guys that allow us to continue to develop and build our program. But then you have others that decide that this place isn't the place for them. So the guys that don't get to play in the ball game are the ones that decide that this isn't the place for them um, and, and they don't play. But if it's a guy that we've mutually agreed that if you've gotten your degree, Maryland's done their part, you've done your part, and you want to go test the waters, you deserve it. I have no problem with it. And as long as they make the practices, I'll let them play in the game. Mike, with 
obviously three straight bowls is nothing to sneeze at. Um, with this being the final season. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> with this being the final season for guys like Talia and Jay Sean and, and Tarheeb and Bo, is there a sense that um, maybe that the, the full potential of this team hasn't been tapped yet? 100%. Hence the reason we talk about the best being ahead for us. Uh, those four you named and, you know, the permanent captains and guys that have been here through the, the course of this rebuild, um, we're forever indebted to the guys that, that they, they bought. We sold them a vision that they bought before it came to fruition, and then they built it, as I said, with their hands. They, they played a major role, all four of those guys. And, you know, as I've said before, there's a lot of guys that aren't here that have left the program that played a huge role in where we are today. And so, you know, I, I keep harping on this landscape of college football and where it is. You know, the days of, of being upset of players leaving, you know, they've they've left their mark here. I mean, guys that are leaving here for whatever reasons they choose, they've left a mark that have allowed us to get the program to where it is. So I don't know how you can be upset. Um, like I said, I've I've dealt with attachment issues my whole life a little bit, and so I, I used to used to really bother me when people would leave. But now you know what? Everybody's got to do what's best for them, and and that's the part as a boomer I got to get over because I'm one of those guys that grew up down Southwest DC that loyalty is like, hey man, you give me something, you put me on, you help me, I'm there for you. But this generation, as I was told by some of my younger people, they don't. It's, hey, whatever, man, I'm moving on. Get over it, old man. So I'm over it. Are you going to miss the mayo? No, I'm good with that. I'm good on the mayo. I kind of, I like trans perfect. Uh, <laughs> Frank, real quick. Mike, without Talia, does that change what you do game plan wise going forward, knowing that the other guys have their own skill sets? And how does that change as you prepare for this game? Yeah, it doesn't change a lot for us because, as I said, you know, I don't think Billy and Leah are as more different than what people think. They're different stature and size in terms of their measurables. But both guys throw the RPO stuff really well. Both guys have great movement skills. Uh, I think Billy runs and plays with a little more power, obviously, because of his size. Uh, he's smart as a whip. He's been in the system. You know, his brother Kyle played in this system at, at Alabama. So, you know, he's very familiar with what we do. And like I said, you look at his uh, body of work here, you know, uh, we, we kind of glance over the fact that, you know, we weren't bowl eligible and we were down in that Indiana game when he came in and brought us back. And then the, the, the win over Northwestern, which was a dog fight the year before, uh, he found a way to win that game for us. And, you know, I got a lot of faith in him, just like I said, doing Cam Edge and been really impressed with Champ Long as well. Uh, doing these bowl modified practices. Natural thrower has some skill. Um, I'm excited about it. Pardon me? Uh, we'll see. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Happy holidays. Thank you.